Hello, movie trivia schmodown universe. We are so excited for season eight. Season eight is the biggest season that we have ever done. And we have launched the schmodown faction merch. That is right. Faction merch from all eight factions. They are available now. You like swag? Well, get a swag hoodie. Put on that hat with corruption hat. Put the shirt on. Get the championship design. Anytime you purchase faction merch, a percentage of the profits go into a pool. It is going to contribute to what the factions are playing for. Hell, I want to see them playing for $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. I want to see them playing for what they are able to play for, what they have deserved to play for. Who's the faction I'm supporting? Who do I want to win? And I get it. So head on over to the Skybound store now. The link is in the description of this video. If you're watching your favorite factions and you know when they're going to be competing, Put on the shirt, put on the hoodie, put on the hat, and let us know. Take some pictures, tweet it out, hashtag Schmodown, and we will retweet it and show everybody who you are supporting. Enjoy the match, enjoy the merch, and we'll see you next time. Okay. No, that makes sense. Sure. Wait, anybody? In the whole league, any division. You're sure? You don't have to be rude about it. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. All right, bye. <sighs> Guys, here's the deal. And Draco's out. He's actually out, there's no way he can play. But we can pick anybody to play with Snyder. Anyone? Anybody. Any division, FCL, somebody off the street. Wow. <sighs> What's wrong? The kid? Well, the reason why I'm heavy breathing like that is I, I just don't like it. You know, it's just that kind of choice is just too much power for us. And with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've made a big commitment this year to avoid as much responsibility as possible, specifically great responsibility. Oh, I want no responsibility whatsoever. No, 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 no. No, no, this should be someone that they're comfortable playing with. This should be someone that they know will make a great partner for Jeff and who will put up a championship level match. Look, that's, that's what they deserve as the current champions. That's what the stars deserve. That's what we deserve as we're trying to win those belts back and get those points for the faction. That's what the fans want. It's a pay-per-view. We need to make sure this match is of the highest caliber possible. You both know how much I, in particular, wanted this to be the odd couple. I mean, this is a championship level match. That's why I've been training so hard. But who, who's a championship level player? Let, Let them, them choose. choose. Jinx. Let them choose. That's great. All right, I'm gonna call Grace back. Oh, and uh, get their addresses? That's, that's weird. Oh, no, I wanna send them this soap. It's so wholesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a new soap from Salt Cat Soap, our oh. Etsy store. Yeah, these are from our uh, Father's Day gift set. Uh, they're uh, inspired by Monty Python and the Holy Grail. This is an elderberry honey soap bar and a shrubbery massage bar. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the movie trivia schmodown alongside Andrew Guy. I'm Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, and this is an inner geekdom matchup that both of us and the world at large has been highly anticipating. Andrew got two rookies. Tell me if I sound like a broken record. And these two rookies come with a gigantic set of expectations. It's been a season of rookie performances to astound. Could we have two more here today? Look, man, we're in season eight of the movie trivia showdown now, okay? You cannot come into this league and not be a force to be reckoned with. That, what, that's what FCL's for, right? That's where you can get your feet wet, you can figure stuff out. You gotta come into the big show and you gotta put up some big time numbers. So yes, I mean, honestly, Mark, you do sound a little bit like a broken record, but I think that's okay, which means that the rookies in this league have gotten better and better and better. And you know what I'm gonna tell you right now? 100% accuracy is the only thing trivia-wise that will impress me today. I want to see them play the game like vets. 
The strategy is what is all important. So when you look at our two rookies here today, Jacob Wittnaben and Moose Haas, it's going to be an electric one, not just because of those two players, but the factions that they represent. You have yeah. Wittnaben with the usual suspects and you say, OK, well, wait, but isn't isn't Jacob the one who had his buddy Juice hyping him up and Juice is also the name of an O.J. Simpson puppet that the manager of Moose Haas is known to hang out with. So I, th the math is now already complicating me and we're not even underway. Uh, that was maybe the worst game of six degrees of separation I think anyone could be involved in. But you know what? We're here for it. And yeah, when you talk about the managers here, you have Sam Levine and Gucci, who in their own right are legends of the game with two astronomically different styles of management. It's going to be a fun one here for sure, as Whitney Ben and Haas, you don't really know what their strengths are, and so it's tough nope. to prepare for your opponent when they are a rookie, and you're also a rookie, so you're excited to get underneath the white-hot spotlight of the movie Trivia Schmodown. You practice for this moment, you dreamt about it, and now it's finally here. I don't even think it's going to be a matter of trying to outwit your opponent. It's just a matter of staying cool, calm, composed, collected, and other words that likely begin with C. Yeah, I... <laughs> You know, Mark, it's been four years since you've stepped into the movie trivia ring yourself, but honestly, you hit every single nail on the head right there. Those are all the things that we need these rookies to do today. And again, I'm going to go right back to Gucci and to Sam. I think it's on them to make sure their rookies play the perfect game. We've seen a little bit here and there where there's some miscommunication between rookies and managers, or we've seen maybe rookies getting ahead of themselves. I want to see them pump the brakes. And like you said, They've got to make a name for themselves today by the way they play. Man, four years has flown by. It's been like four days since you got on the desk and you're already doing a better job than me. So I guess I'll just toss to another epic promo as to how we got here from our own Nerd Chronic. 2021 draft list. All right. Schmodown. Be right there. So this guy sweats Star Wars like Kaiser sweat sausage. But managers make no mistake. Whitmaven is all you've been waiting for. And when it comes to geeky movie trivia, Jacob Whitnaven. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Sam Levine, you know what's good, baby! Not sure what Hunted Moose has to do with the Schmodown. That's the name of my opponent. Now get over here. Who named that kid Moose? Now ever since the draft, I've been waiting around patiently for the great Sam Levine to finally let me out of my cage. Well, today is the day where we all get to find out why Whitmaven is all you've been waiting for. How can you not be excited about a player like Jacob? The, the fire, the passion, the knowledge, the kick-ass guitar. Who I'm picking here, the best inner geekdom player in the draft. His name is Mark the Moose Haas. We should ask Tom D Dagnino to tell us more about the Moose. Yeah. I'm not so sure. <laughs> Oh, hello, Schmodam. I'm the Moose. Just like the rest of my teammates, probably never heard of All of that's about to change. And just because the people in the Facebook group don't know them, doesn't mean they're not going to be better than half the league. We took the people that we knew could win for us. Thanks to the brilliance of Gucci and his holy grail document, the 997 page dossier, I've been plucked from obscurity and brought into the movie trivia Schmodam for one reason. Thump some skulls in movie trivia. Dossier, dossier. Has he ever said that word properly once? Probably not. I've heard a lot of great things about Gucci's dossier, and so far it's really worked. But I'm pretty sure the moose only got on because the barbarian's pet Elvis owes him money from back when they all lived at the zoo. You've seen the dominance of the tyrant. You've seen the majesty of King Kong. You've seen the holiness of Brother Lomas. The barbarism of the barbarian. The downtownness of Griffey Nooms. The golden touch of Kim Mikes, the command of Gold Leader, the greatness of the Goat Law, JT and his triumphant return, and the power of our Taylor Bay. I'm not saying that the exchange saved the best for last. But wait till you get a load of me. Now speaking directly to Moose, the time for talking is over. It's hot in season. Squeeze it easy, Gucci. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, Andrew, you see that and you say, okay, well, juice is very high on Jacob as far as Jacob's manager, Sam Levine. Seems pretty excited, but it is Finstock also that has a lot of words and a lot of inspiration is a very loose way of saying how he would pump up Moose Haas. We're looking for big performances that are going to be needed by both managers here to get their kid a win. I think the most shocking thing here so far today, Mark, is that the guy with the keytar is not on the same faction as Bobby Gucci. It feels like there's a bit of a misstep there in the cosmos. You know what? We've been saying that this whole season, and we started with the draft. By a lot of people had a lot of question marks about the draft from the Finstock Exchange. It's panned out pretty well, especially all the young talent that he seems to have found in some weird farm system that no one else knew about. Could he have another gem on his hands here today with Haas? Or is it going to be Sam Levine, the usual suspects, finding a new star in Jacob Whitneybin? We are about to find out right now. You good to go, partner? I'm ready to go. Let's do this thing. All right, then here comes the voice of Dr. Clyde. Uh, Christian Harloff is here. Christian, at your ready, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. Three rounds in the inner geekdom division. Introducing first, representing the usual suspects. Making his Schmodown debut, he is Jacob the Wonder Whitney. What's going on, fellas? What's going on? Jacob, Jacob, good to have you here today, my friend. I got to start off hot and quick here with your partner in the juice. What is it like having such a great support system around you? And, you know, you might as well tell us what it's like having Sam as your manager while you're at it. Oh, there's nothing like it. I got the best support system you could have. And on top of that, I got the sickest guitar concerts on the weekends. It's great. Yeah, I see a lot of axes there that I would love to watch you shred at some point. We got a nice Revenge of the Jedi poster, which turned into the greatest Star Wars film of all time. So, Jacob, when you first came about the Schmodan and you said, I want to do that, what was it about the sport, about the game, about one of the charming hosts that made you feel like you had a place in this game? Honestly, I saw a community that just was willing to accept people to for you know all these different passions that they like and i wanted to be a part of that i wanted to show off how great i could be knowing about all that stuff and uh so got some connections with juice and here i am Uh, yeah andrew and i were talking about uh juice you want to give us any uh sort of illumination shed some light on your and juice's relationship or how juice is able to kind of get you primed and squeezed for the match today uh well there was a day where i was you know, I really needed some pizza, and I heard that there was this dealer down the street, and uh, figured it out the guy from Pizza USA. So, and then figured out he played some guitar, and uh, we hit, we we hooked up, played, jammed out a bit, and uh, he told me about the movie trivia showdown, and uh, then he and then then I got drafted by Sam. So, yeah. All well, right, uh... Mark. You know, I've never heard of a pizza dealer, but if that's a way to meet your friends, then I'm all for it. Jacob, thank you so much. We're very, very excited to see what you have to bring it to the show today, my friend. And his opponent, representing the Finstock Exchange, making his Schmodown debut. This is Moose Haas! There is Moose Haas, and he's got his Finstock Exchange mug. He's decked out in some Ghostbusters, and you look pretty relaxed there, Moose. So what has it been like working with um, the very mysterious Tom Dagnino, Bobby Gucci? I don't even know what you call him, much less how your relationship is going thus far. Can you... Let us in on that. Well, to me, he's boss, right? He manages this this faction. He gives directions. He gives assignments. We follow him. And you know what? It's been great. Uh, You know, coming into the league, I am a completely unknown entity, right? And I'll probably remain that way for a very long time. 
Um, and so coming into this, you know, it, it, this isn't my realm. This isn't my world. And having a guy like Gucci as, as a boss and a mentor, you know, he just orchestrates and he makes you feel comfortable coming into these situations. And, you know, quite on top of it, uh, uh, or, oh, Jesus. You Sorry. know, Moose, it's okay. It's all right. I'm actually going to hop in here because I have a question for you. You know, we Please. heard Ellis kind of talk about it in the intro saying that the biggest competition I think you're going to have today is against yourself. You're an unknown. Your opponent is also an unknown. So what's the goal for you today? What is the biggest thing that you want to walk away from from this match other than obviously the win? We all know that you want to win. Correct answers. I mean, Correct that's answers. what it's down to. Yeah, I got to get comfortable in this realm. I got, you know, it, it, look, you get the first one under the belt and keep moving forward with it all right I, I hesitate to say this but both of these competitors look pretty well coached thus far andrew but now let's put them underneath the white hot spotlight of the movie trivia schmodown we will welcome back whitney bin and the competitors meet for the very first time and now they get their very first rule reading and it just happens to be about rule and round number one, here we go. Ten questions in ten different corners of inner geekdom know-how. Each question is worth one point. There is no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing. At least there is not in round number one. As soon as Andrew or myself ask you the question, you have 15 seconds to get that correct answer from way back in the dark recesses of your mind onto whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera. At the same time, you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. He's kicking around the Shire somewhere. He's so adorable. He doesn't have any shoes. JTE, if you need to use another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, want to buy yourself more time for either practical or dramatic purposes, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge. You may utilize at any point throughout the three-round match. If you think an answer to something's fishy, you don't like the way something was ruled, use a challenge. We'll bring in managers. You may delineate to your heart's content. Andrew and I will hear our arguments, and then we will ultimately make a ruling if said challenge is ratified. All right. So, seemed pretty clear to me anyway, but I've done this a million times. So, let's go to Jacob Whitney Ben. Are you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's get it. And his opponent, Moose Haas, are you prepared for Schmodown combat? Let's do this. Hit the music, Andrew. Then let's get ready to Schmodown! All right, gentlemen, your first question in Inner Geekdom. This is three rounds. Your very first question in round number one comes in the category of DC. DC Films. What 2011 DC film features performances from Mark Strong? Tamahara Morrison and Blake Lively. So, uh, Tamira Morrison, but very, very close, and we got some tough names to pronounce here. I'm not, I'm not judging you. I know that you made me go first on purpose. You did. <laughs> Four. It's an old veterans trick. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Haas. What do you have? Green Lantern. That Green is Lantern is correct, and Moose gets his very first movie trivia showdown points. Does Jacob? Green Lantern. We're off and running. Both competitors have their respective sources of light in the background. And we go to your next question. And that's in the category of, what's this? Star Wars. Never heard of it, but here we go. For one point, in what film will you hear C-3PO say the line, I am mechanically incapable of speaking translations from Sith. I believe the rule was passed by the Senate of the Old Republic. Now, I know that we were talking about it a little bit uh, behind the scenes, but is that a cat drinking a bottle of booze? Or is it a squirrel or a dog? It is a bulldog. Wow, answering two questions in 15 seconds is Moose Haas. Three, two, one. Yeah, let's see if you got the one for uh, points here right after we go to Jacob. Jacob, did you have it? Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Is the correct answer. And is Haas? Rise of Skywalker. Nailed it, and they do not look scared, Andrew. No, I mean, incredibly confident in their pre-games. And as you said, you know, they get that first question out of the way. We're on a roll. Question number three, gentlemen, in the category of X-Men. Who plays the role of Beast in X-Men The Last Stand? It is just so nice to have an announcing partner who knows how to pronounce that X word. Yeah, well, I messed it up on my very first question today, and I even Googled how to pronounce Five, it. Four. Three. That's probably thought too much, too. Repeat the question. 
Okay. Our first repeat here for Wittenaben in the category of X-Men. Who plays the role of Beast in X-Men The Last Stand? All right. This movie gets a lot of hate, Mark. Thinking their way through it. I mean, I saw it and I was really hung over, but I liked it in the theater at the time. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, going to Moose first. Did he have it? It's Kelsey Grammer. Razor Crane is correct. Does Jacob? I guess Nicholas Holt. Ah. That was a good guess. He's played Beast before, just not in that particular iteration. So we move on to the next category, which is graphic novels. Don't worry, we read them for you and made movies out of them. It's about the movies based on graphic novels. For one point, who plays Ava Lord, the woman of Dwight's dreams and nightmares that he forsakes his battle with his inner demons to help in Sin City, a dame to kill for? If you were named Ava Lord, Mark, could you be a good person or would you have to be bad? I think you got to have a dark side. That's just the way Ava Lords go. Five. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's see what Jacob has. I guess Jessica Alba. It is incorrect for a two point lead. Moose? Ava is played by Ava Green. That is correct. And all of a sudden, it is a two point gash opened up by Haas as we proceed to the halfway point of round number one. Yeah, only halfway. So obviously, there are 10 questions in round one, but those two points definitely matter early. Here we go, gentlemen. In the category of Batman, your fifth question In what Batman film will you hear Alfred say, Broken wings mend in time? One day, Robin will fly again. I promise. Where do you uh, where do you stand on the whole Robin thing? Do you see a valuable crime fighter or just a hanger on? What do you think? I feel like as I've gotten older, my opinion of Robin has <clears throat> gone down. Three, two. Oh, you were going the other way. With that one. Nope, Pens nope. down. Let's go to Moose first to maintain his perfect round one. Batman Forever. Nailed it. Does Jacob have it? Put Batman versus Superman. Ooh, Batman versus Incorrect. Superman. Five to two, and Whitney Ben needs a correct answer here to stay in the ball game early as we move to the wizarding world of that boy who casts spells. And your question, for one point, what is the first film in the Harry Potter franchise to feature Helena Bonham Carter as the villainix Bellatrix Lestrange? And if you thought Ava Lords had a dark side. Yeah. Bellatrix Bell Lestrange is... That's tough. You're getting to Bunny Ranch territory. Five, four, three, two. I repeat one. the question. All right. Got it in just in time. Categories The Wizarding World. The question What is the first film in the Harry Potter franchise to feature Helena Bottom Carter as the villainous Bellatrix Lestrange? I had to check my own spelling on that crap. I like that uh, the, uh, the, we have JTE out from both competitors here early. Yeah, it's the first time that a, the irony of a JTE rule being used for spelling. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Going first to Jacob. Do you have it? Order of the Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix gets him back on the correct answering yeah. train. That's another point for Jacob. Does Haas have it? Order of the Phoenix. Pretty sure. Got it. it and spelled boom, Phoenix wrong. Look at the spelling. Look at that. <laughs> Six, two, three right now. But that was a big get there for Wet Naben. Your seventh question, gentlemen, is in the category of Star Trek. In what film, in the Kelvin timeline, will you hear Spock say, when you've lived as many lives as he, fear of death is illogical? You know, you look at these two rookies and it's their first showdown. Do you remember your first showdown, Andrew? Who you competed against? I do, I do. I remember it very well. It was just recently. It was just uh, with the Night Sisters. Uh four it wasn't that recently three two one pens down we'll talk about that later uh let's go to moose did you have it star trek beyond star trek beyond does whitney bin into darkness into i darkness. didn't get it so now it is a four point lead seven to three moose over jacob as we careen into a category with four letters, TMNT. What does it stand for? Those teenagers who are mutants, ninjas, and get this, turtles. 
no, for a point. Way. Your question. Who, Who plays? plays the role of oh. Baxter Stockman, a mad scientist and former worker at Saks Industries who allies with Shredder in the latter's aims to take over New York City in the film Out of the Shadows? All right, so if you're at a party, Ava Lord's available, Bellatrix Lestrange, and Baxter Stockman. Who are you hanging out with? Five. Definitely four, Baxter Stockman. Three. <laughs> One. Pens down. Let's go to you, Moose. Excuse me, Jacob. Did you have it? Jacob first. Uh, I guess the name Bones. I didn't have it. Didn't have it, does Moose? You bet your ass I'm hanging out with Baxter Stockman. Tyler Perry. He's got some money to kick around there. So it is currently eight to three. And more importantly for Moose here, Andrew, two questions away from a perfect round one that would net him a bonus question. Not there quite yet. Yeah, perfect round one so far. He's got to hit two more, though. And his ninth question for both you gentlemen comes in the category of heroes and villains. Who plays the role of Mad Mardigan, a boastful, immured mercenary swordsman who helps Willow on his quest in Willow? You ever catch Always. this one? Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. Everyone loves Willow. They got a series coming out now or some some sort of reboot, right? I don't keep up with the trades. I feel like it can't Five, be good. Four. Three. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> two, one. The optimism you only find from Andrew Guy. Uh, let's go to Moose. Did you have this? Val Kilmer. The great star of Top Secret is correct. And Jacob. Val Kilmer. He got Val Kilmer that time, and that's going to keep him in the ball game. It is nine to four. But now we get to your last category in round number one for the field of competition. The question comes from Mixed Bag, so really it could be anything. I have no idea. I'm going to make it up right now. For one point, what 2013 swashbuckling adventure film features supporting performances by James Badge Dale, Tom Wilkinson, and William Fitchner? You know, Mark, this is a, another perfect round opportunity for a, another rookie here in Season 8. It seems like it's happening every single time we see rookies come to the stage. See if you can cash it in in five, four, three, two, one. Pens down there, Jacob. Pens down. Thank you. And let's go to you first. See if you got it. Oh, I didn't get it fully. I found Pirates of the Caribbean, Stranger, but I tried to get Stranger Tides. Uh, it's unfortunately incorrect. Does Moose have it for the perfect round? Of course I do. It's the Lone Ranger. He, does. he does. And that is perfection personified in round number one for Moose Haas. It's a 10 to four lead right now. He has over his opponent, Jacob Whitnabin, but Andrew right now from your lips to his ears, Moose, you don't have to write this down because the question is only to you. Andrew's gonna ask you a bonus question for one point. Moose, your bonus question. What 1990s superhero film features the tagline, an ordinary man forced to become an extraordinary hero? Are you an extraordinary guy or an extraordinary guy, Mark? Um, I think ordinary is a pretty good description for me. Five. In all four, walks of life. Three, two, Is it the one. spirit? That is incorrect. Mm. We were looking for the Rocketeer, but still 10 to four. 10 to four, Mark, coming out of round number one. And I think the most important thing here is that we're only through one round. There is still a lot more Schmodown mm -hmm. to be played. And that wheel round is all important. And there's an even bigger premium on what you spend when you are a rookie. And so it's 10 to four. It's a commanding lead for Haas, but it must be nice for Whitney Ben just to see that Haas can indeed miss a question occasionally. So we go into round number two. The rules of round number two are as follows. Gentlemen, as we intimated, it is the wheel round, the wheel of fate, doom, and ultimately justice will be served as you each get a spin at that wheel. Once you settle on a category, five questions will emerge from that particular realm. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question, and there is no stealing. I'm kidding. Of course there's stealing. It's round number two. It's the wheel round. You miss a question, your opponent can steal it. If you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We're nice fellas. We'll give you four options, one of which we're told is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question does go down to one. That's all preamble. Rules are done, and now we have a simple question to ask Moose. Would you like to spin that wheel first or defer to your opponent? 
Let's keep this train rolling. I'll go first. 60 seconds, Tom. Told you. Hey, boss. Fantastic. Well, well done. The questions weren't even uh, said and you had the answers already. That's the mark of some, that's mark of a genius playing really well here. You used one GT rule, perfectly done. Amazing. Now look, I just got off of 18 holes of golf. I'm a scratch golfer. You're a scratch here in IG. Let's do this. Uh, Let's Tom, you did not shoot 72. It's close. I like the chain, Tom. Oh, thanks. I got this, uh, I was in Jamaica. Today? No, a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Fascinating backstory as always, none of it accurate. And around and around it goes, and it is settled on mm. Spider-Man. I think we saw a couple of weeks ago what happened with this, and we didn't really like it. I think you agree here. Yeah, you know, I wrote the study docs on Spider-Man, but you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. It's been a tricky SOB, so let's spin that thing again. Well, all right, opting to spin again, Arguchi and Haas. Away from the, the web slinger there, Mark. Yeah, I mean, Spider-Man, like apparently the most beloved hero um, on Earth. And uh, from some poll, I saw it now. He's okay. missing to opponent's choice. This okay. could be big for Whitney Ben. So we're going to drop out Haas and Dagnino. All right. So an unorthodox way to meet your manager on camera for the first time. But here we are. You gentlemen have 60 seconds to determine which category you want to give Moose Haas. I think you know I'm reformed, Mark. Anyway, uh, Jacob, this is very exciting. Uh, I know what I'm thinking, uh, but what what are you thinking, friend? Um, a part of me thinks he just told us what to pick. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> so. uh, okay, fair enough. I, I I know that you've got a definitive strength, but you know what? I I, I like where your head's at. Let's 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 do a, a good defense instead of a good offense right now. Let's give him Spider Man. You want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. All right, Spider Man for them. Final answer. Here is Moose Haas. And so, Moose, you're going to be fielding questions about Spider-Man from Andrew Guy. Five in total, each one worth two points unless you need multiple choice. Andrew, whenever you feel comfy. So we spin away from Spider-Man. We land there once again. Your first question, Moose, in the universe of Spider-Man, who plays Harry Osborn in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Dane DeHaan. Wastes no time and gets two quick points there, Mark. Your second question, Moose. In which film does Peter Parker say, sometimes to do what's right, we must be steady and give up the things we desire the most, even our dreams? Spider-Man 2. Took his time, and he got there. Spider-Man 2 is correct for two more points. Already got four on the board for a 10-point lead now. We are at 14 to 4. Navigating his way through opponents is Moose Haas. Who plays Felicia Hardy in The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Felicity Jones. Give him two more points. Mark Felicity Ow. Jones is correct. He has not checked a multiple choice once on opponents. Woo. Here we go. Your penultimate question. God, I love it. I love it, man. Nailed it. Yes. All right, here we go. Sorry, sorry. That's the thing between him and I. Uh, Moose, in the category of Spider-Man. To date, how many times has J.K. Simmons played the role of J. Jonah Jameson on the big screen? Four times. This guy is a machine. Give him two more points. That is correct. I, I don't think he's taken more than six or seven seconds on each one of these questions. Your no, final and question. Andrew, if I can point out, he's spun away from this category. You, proceed. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. So last question, Moose. In the category of Spider-Man, which Spider-Man villain says the line, I'm not a bad person, just had bad luck? It's the Sandman. He may have missed his bonus question mark, but he has been perfect otherwise in rounds one and two with an opponent's choice. 
It is 20 to four currently. Wow. Moose Haas enjoying a sizable lead. And now it is exit light and enter night for Jacob Whitney Ben because Whitney Ben has some work cut out for him. He still has his round number two wheel spin. And right now he's going to get to talk to his manager for 60 seconds. All right. First off, Andrew Guy, great to see you again, man. I love seeing you behind the desk. You good? Yeah, man. I mean, it's nice to it's nice to meet you, man. I'm a big fan, honestly. I, I really feel like uh, it's crazy that you're in the league. Sam, we'll we'll I'll fill you in later. Just okay, weird. Um, anyway, Jacob, uh, dude, we got to shake that off. Okay, look, there's there's a lot of about luck in the Schmodan, as we well know. You think you're weak in a category and you spin away from it, but then you get to it and it turns out it's all pretty easy, at least to him questions so there's no telling what you're gonna get there's no telling how you feel about a category if that's actually going to relate to what the questions you have to field is so shake all that off right now it's just about your wheel spin your headspace you got two jtes left so we're gonna use them if we need them we're gonna go mul multiple if we need it and right now it's just about hearing the questions making sure we hear them right and then giving our best guess at an answer you feel good feel good all right let's do this thing All right, round and round it goes, and Whitney Ben, even in a pretty tough hole here, it seems to have a good attitude about him. He seems ready to go for round number two. We'll see what he spins. And look all right, that. sweet. We got all six answers ready to go. You going to do this thing? Uh, unfortunately, we have to spin again. Can't uh, already. Oh, wow. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Seems like a little bit of a disadvantage. If you I know knew he knew answers. those, so I yeah. feel like. All right. I'd love to take your word for it, Sam, but... Not the honest guy. Okay. Star Wars, how do we feel about that? Usual suspect, 60 seconds to talk it over. If you don't like it, you can have a mulligan. I, I don't think we need the full 60 seconds, but I'd, I'd like to take them anyway, just to, you know, call my dad, <laughs> tell him I'm about to win the million dollars. Um, you know, Richard Nixon was on laughing. I'm getting ahead of ourselves. I don't want to ruin the moment here. Uh, Jacob, uh, you know how I feel about this. I know how you feel yep. about this. Let's show uh, the fans watching at home what a Star Wars trivia master looks like. We'll stick. Let's do it. All right, and Andrew, this is one of the fun parts about announcing and particularly competing in a match where you have two unknown quantities. If you could spin something to get that smile on your face, maybe it's right in your wheelhouse. We'll see if that is the case with Jacob Whitneybin and Star Wars. Five questions, Jacob. Each one worth two points, unless you need multiple choice, starting now. In a galaxy far, far away. Lock onto him, R2, are the opening words in what Star Wars film? Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. He even told me the episode number. Revenge of the Sith is correct for two points. Whitney Ben is back on the answering train. And his second question in Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, Mace Windu is told by a clone trooper that he has how many special commando units awaiting his order? Multiple choice. All right, your options for one point. Is it A, three, B, four, C, six, or D, five? Is it three? That is incorrect. So for a one point steal, I'm gonna repeat the question in the multiple choice options for Moose. In Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones, Mace Windu is told by a clone trooper that he has how many special commando units awaiting his order? Is it A, 3, B, 4, C, 6, or D, 5? Is it D, 5? It is, and that is a gigantic steal. So Jacob got two. Moose gets one right back. It's 21 to 6. It is a 15-point ball game. Three questions left, and Andrew, now we get to that territory where Jacob's got to answer these to avoid a knockout. Here we go. Your third question, Jacob. In A New Hope, Luke screams, where could he be when he was trying to reach which character with his comm link on the Death Star? C-3PO. That is correct for two 
gigantic points. It's now a 13 point ball game. Two questions remain. Your penultimate Star Wars question in round number two. Which character in The Last Jedi says the following words? I'm sure you are. The resistance is dead. The war is over. Kylo Ren. Another big answer there for two more points. And so yeah. here's where we stand now. It's an 11 point lead for Haas. And so in order to avoid a knockout and force round number three, Jacob Wittenaben is going to have to hit a Star Wars question, at least with multiple choice. If he gets the two points, great. He only trails by nine. He needs to get at least one point and avoid a miss and or a steal. Here we go. Jacob, in The Phantom Menace, how many Republic Datteries does Qui-Gon have to pay for the new hyperdrive? Multiple choice. All right, your options. Is it A, 20,000, B, 10,000, C, 30,000, or D, 15,000? Five, four, three. Is it 20,000? We're going to round three. That is correct. Oh, man. And Whitney Ben avoids the knockout. Barely so. He still has a mountain to climb, but he makes it to round number three, avoids the knockout. It's a 10 point ball game, Andrew. I love that he checked a multiple choice on that last one. You want to hit the panic button. It is your category. He decides to wait, recognizes the situation, checks the multiple, and we're going to round at number three where absolutely anything can happen with the five pointer. As we've seen before, especially in the categories working within inner geekdom for round number three and the rules we go to the guy talking right now each competitor is going to give us a series of numbers we need three numbers from each of you these numbers may range from one to 16 you may not select the same numbers as your opponent now why is that mark why are you being so mean well it's because each number corresponds to a different category of unique inner geekdom know-how your first question is worth two points your next one is worth three points your final question is worth five big points and so although it is Whitney Ben is going to have to answer all three of his questions first to avoid a TKO we go to Haas for his lucky three numbers Moose from one to 16 what feels fortunate five three fourteen all right five three fourteen it is and any three integers that are not those between one and sixteen what feels destined Jacob four eight and twelve Four, eight, and 12 it is. So Andrew Guy is going to be administering your questions, Jacob, and then I will be handling duties for Haas should we reach that point. But right now, we are going to welcome back in the managers. First up, Moose Haas gets 60 seconds to speak. What a joy with Tom Dagnino. You know what, funny man? It is a joy, okay? It definitely is. Look, fantastic stuff here, man. Look, 10-point lead going in here. He was almost finished. He pulled that out of somewhere. I don't want to say where, but he pulled it out of it. Um, look, Thank two DT rules if you even have to answer questions here. If not, let's, uh, like I said, hang a minus one on these guys again and uh, call it a day. Let's see what this guy can do. Great numbers, by the way, as well. Thanks. Yes. All right, drop Great out, Tom. Too. And now Sam has 60 seconds. Dude, dude. That was a crazy round two. I love, I mean, I already told you. You thought about it, you went to multiple, you didn't rush yourself, you took your time, you got there. Now look, yes, we're in a hole going into the final round, but here's the thing, okay? The Finstock Exchange, they are like the Tchaikovskys of the Schmodown world. They don't know how to close. They don't know how to finish, okay? Mm. That one's from a music nerds out there, both of you. So uh, here's the thing, man, you have one job to do right now. Utilize your JTEs if you need them. You still got the two left and just give some answers. If they're the right answers, great. If not, that's okay too. I just need you to dig as deep as you can get and be the Jacob that I drafted. That's all I'm going to ask of you, man. Dig deep, pull what you got, and whatever happens, happens. I'm proud of you either way. You got it. All right, let's do this then. All right, Jacob. 
you are going to be going first. You have to hit all three of your questions to avoid the TKO. And my friend, you selected the numbers 4, 8, and 12. We'll be going to 4 first, which coincides to the category of animated. For your two-point question in the category of animated, Mr. Wittenaben, who voices Dick Grayson in the Lego Batman movie? Five, five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. Second one. I can do that. In the category of animated for two points, who voices Dick Grayson in the Lego Batman movie? Five, four, three. Two. Repeat the question. That's his last JTE rule. Your last repeat? In the category of animated for two points, who voices Dick Grayson in the Lego Batman movie? Five, four, three. Is it Tom Holland? Two. Your winner by way of technical knockout, Moose Haas. Michael Sarah was the answer, and now you see the celebratory, but not perhaps a wholly unexpected victory for Gucci and his newest experiment, which paid off brilliantly in the form of Moose Haas. So we are going to have an interview with both the winning and the losing squad here in just a second with our own Steph Sabra. In the meantime, we'll let the gentlemen celebrate. Boom. And Andrew, what wow. we just <clears throat> witnessed today was fight, was toughness, was grit, but most of all, in the case of Moose Haas, an expert level inner geekdom match played. Yeah, I mean, I think at the top of the show, I said the only thing that would impress me trivia-wise was 100%. Uh, and if you don't count that bonus, I mean, he basically got there. I think he got a steal along the way. He played the game perfectly. They went chasing slices in round number two on that wheel, but you understand why they spin away from it. They land on Spider-Man anyway, and they just a perfect game, top to bottom. I mean, yes, Gucci's insane. Yes, he drafted a bunch of rookies, man. But as of right now, it really does seem pretty brilliant. And Moose Haas, not to be confused with the pitcher from the Brewers, is exceptional at movie trivia. You know, it's so funny because Dagnina would be the one manager that you would say, well, maybe that is his strategy is to have his player spin the category he's great at, spin away from it to throw the opponent off the scent, spin opponent's choice, and then they'll give you Spider-Man, and then you just look like a great player. I don't know that all of that went into their pre-game meal but i do know this moose haas like you said impressed andrew guy which he hit pretty much every question he was asked but i was also impressed by the toughness showed by both him and his playing opponent because i mean being down in a hole that large where you haven't even spun round number two and you also feel like you have to oh god i just got to answer questions to avoid a knockout the kid played his way well and used his head as well as his heart in that star wars round two and yes, those are two of the most crucial parts of it, or his head and his heart, right? We saw the level-headedness in round number two, but the heart to stay in the game after missing three in a row in round one when your opponent is staying perfect, it's really tough, man. And it gets exponentially harder every single time he gets another question right and you get one more wrong. So the fact that he was able to come back in round two the way that he did, push this to round three, I think is a really, really, it's a testament to the heart that he has. Like you just said, that's a really difficult thing to do. And a lot of lesser players would have given up along the way. Well, someone who always has 100% accuracy is our own Steph Sabra, and we now turn it over to her for an interview with Moose Haas, your winner, as well as his manager, some guy. Steph, best of luck. <laughs> Moose and Gucci, otherwise known as some guy. Congratulations. What an epic win. Tom, another rookie win, another TKO. What's the secret, man? You know, they might as well call us the TKO exchange because that's what keeps happening. Uh, we just, like I said, keep hanging minus ones on everybody. Uh, soon, some people are going to have negative points as a whole this year. Um, look, it's the dossier. There's no question about it. I said it. I reiterated it. 
a whole draft that this is what was happening. I was giving people a formula, but they don't listen. People look at me as the boy who cried wolf. That's just stupid. And it's being proven day in and day out by these rookie competitors. They are fantastic. Look at this guy, perfect through the first round, the bonus question, who cares? We don't care about that. Next thing you know, boom, maybe we did do that, Mark. Maybe we did push a Spider-Man so we could push back on it. That was another mistake by them. Look, we're crushing factions one at a time. And, you know, Sam's got another, uh, you know, IG character in his stable that, uh, you know, we'll see if uh, how he does against us. That's what we Maybe want. Maybe they'll start listening, Gucci, because I do think you have the secret. But Moose, I got to say, I absolutely love the energy you're bringing. You did it in your audition tape. You did it today. You just said that you are here to answer questions correctly. And that's exactly what you did in Tenfold. How are you feeling? It's a good day. It was a lot Great. of fun. Mm -hmm. Great day. I love that. Even simplicity in the answer after an epic win. But I do, Gucci, you brought up round two. I want to talk about round two when the opponent's choice came and then Moose swept that round. That was sick to watch. Well, you know, look, there is no weaknesses. He doesn't have weaknesses. So it was just like, we just didn't, well, let's, let's spin off that and see what else we land on. Maybe something a little better. But... There was no doubt in our mind, you know, once we went up the points in the first round, it was just cruise control. And that's what we've been doing to opponents lately. You know, getting on them real quick, hitting the gas, airing them out, and then going in cruise control and settling down and playing the way we know we're capable of playing. And that's been happening consistently. And people, I think, are starting to jump on it and starting to realize what is really happening here, which is unprecedented and just complete brilliance on everybody in our faction's part. That's just a fact. Diamond hand Who laser you? all day long. Gucci, we've had such exciting matches this season, but I want to know who do you want to take on next, Moose? Amaru, come out to play. <laughs> Ooh, I love that. A little spice with the champagne bottles. You got it popping already, and you should it's be popping champagne. It's funny how little bottles actually fit on my finger, so I had to buy these. This is like my third attempt to find a bottle that fits these. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, I stuff. hope you're amazing drinking teams. that champagne tonight and celebrating this awesome match. Gucci, Moose, great to see y'all, and I'll see you next mm -hmm. time. Yep, yep. Diamond hands, laser eyes, all day long. Minus <laughs> ones, hanging minus ones. <laughs> Diamond hands and laser eyes, Mark. Uh, what? <laughs> Look, this is the thing. The guy already knows everything about inner geekdom, and now he's rubbing my face because one time I got my finger stuck in a Snapple bottle. I have fat fingers is the point of that diatribe. But now we look at who he might be playing next, which is Amaru Moses. What do you think about that match? I mean, these are all of a sudden two of the hottest rookies on the inner geekdom block. I, I want to see which one of them can really come into that next match with the confidence that we saw in their first matches, right? It, we it's easy to go perfect, right? Well, it's not easy, but it's at least easy mentally to go perfect. You never have that big moment of adversity adversity, or you never have that really rough round, right? I want to see how either of these guys bounce back when maybe their opponent goes perfect in round one, or maybe they actually hit opponents on a category that they don't want. That's what I want to see, because as we know, to get to the top, whether you're Smets or Mike or Mara or Rachel or blah, 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 you have to learn how to play through the best in the world. It's a learning lesson that the finest champions of the Schmodown have had to learn, and every one of them the hard way, is that when the chips yes. are down, that's when you have to be at your best. And I think we saw just a little bit of that toughness, that heart from Jacob Whitney been today. He was ended up on the losing end, but I think he's got a lot to pull from on this match to inspire him for the next one. And now for an interview with Jacob and Sam Levine, his usual suspects manager, we go back to Steph Sabra. Jacob and Sam, good to see you both. It was a hard match today, but it was really exciting to see a rookie match that was this good. And you had a lot of fight, Jacob. How are you feeling after this? Uh, you know, obviously I wish the outcome was a little bit different. And uh, I think the lack of a guitar behind me really uh, made me lose some inspiration. Uh, but uh, bottom line is today, uh, it was, to be honest, this is me dipping my toes into the Schmodown to, for the first time. And uh, you know what? Uh, I think uh, I learned today, just it, it's never over until the second bell rings. So 
Heck yes, go. definitely. And it's definitely not over for you. I'm excited to see your next match. But Sam, let's talk about round two. In hindsight, sure. uh, Spider-Man, do you think that was the right choice? Or do you think that maybe you could have you could have gone another way? Uh, I mean, look, the fact of the matter is these are two rookies. So there's no tape. Uh, yeah. to really extensively look over so that we could determine strengths, weaknesses, that sort of thing. And Tom can live in the revisionist history uh, that he wants to, but he literally said, well, we knew what happened to this last time, so let's spin away. So obviously they studied it, and he did not do well. So basing on that and the fact that they did actually spin away, that wasn't just conjecture, mm -hmm. um, that, that meant it was probably the best thing for us to do, was give him the thing that he didn't feel confident in. And like I said, sometimes you get very lucky and the questions that do get asked are in your limited scope of knowledge on a subject. And it looks like that's what happened for them. And you know, that that's the luck of the Schmodown. Sometimes it goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I know that this is not anyone's ideal first match, but there have been so many players, great players in the history of the Schmodown who have had matches they'd love to forget. I certainly had one with the great Brad Rutter playing a team's match uh, where we got KO'd. Uh, I think the great Dan Merle's got a match against someone who may very well be on this stream that he probably wishes to forget. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter whether that's your very first match or whether that's 10 matches in. We've all got matches that did not represent the players that we are, and I know Jacob feels that way about today's match, and I feel that way about today's match, so it's all about getting that next match under his belt, getting his feet wet, like he said, that's what today was. I know he's got a lot more in him than just this match. Definitely, and there was so much good takeaway, including just the rapport between you two. I feel like, Sam, you knew exactly what to say to Jacob. Jacob, you had an incredible attitude even going into round two, being able to pick yourself up and getting into that round two, into that round three. But I'm curious your um, your opinion on Moose, a fellow rookie in this league, after this match today. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, I, he definitely belongs in this league, and I thought he was actually a lot of fun to play with today. Uh, I am... A little nervous for him calling out Amaru the way he has, uh, personally, knowing <laughs> Amaru personally, but hey, it was still fun playing with him. He did a great job. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It, it, it was an absolutely fun match, and he did. That yeah. was a fun call out that we saw at the end there, Sam. It was, but I don't think he knows the Warriors very well. The guy who does the clinky thing, he gets stabbed. So <laughs> choose your characters a little better. <laughs> Yeah, Sam, I was going to ask you that. Gucci seems to have you on his radar, calling you out constantly, but now we do see Moose calling out Moses. What do you think? You don't think that that was a good idea? I, You know, I mean, uh, no, I don't think that was a good idea. Uh, Amaru is going to eat him up for breakfast, but if that's <laughs> what he wants, then hey, I don't have to pay for a meal and my guy eats, so... Well, Jacob, I'm really excited to see you in your next match. Sam, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Andrew, yeah, Mark, back to you. Andrew, they may have taken the L, but they seemed in pretty good spirits and like they're ready for their next match. I mean, I feel like we could throw another match at Jacob right now and he'd say, all right, go, spin the wheel. Yeah, I mean, what's crazy about this is, is that a lot of times competitors will feel very defeated after a performance like that. I mean, obviously it was a rough outing for, for Whitnaven, but... I like the spirits. I like that he's ready to come back. I like that Sam is ready to put him back in the ring. But, you know, speaking of Sam, it sounds like we have Amaru Moses going up against Moose Haas here in the IG, which is going to be uh, nothing short of a barn burner. Yeah, and we know that Amaru is going to have a great training partner within his own faction to get him ready for that match. How do you see that one shaping up? Because it does appear Haas is really hell-bent on facing Moses. Is he biting off more than he can chew? It's tough to say, man. When you look at both these guys' game tapes, since it is so short, Moose Haas technically looks unstoppable, right? And he's a guy that hasn't missed a question yet. I like that he's gunning for it. Amaru Moses is a man not to be trifled with, though. It was a guy that they talked about a lot coming into the league. We saw how he performed. They're not just bluffing. He can play. He's got the knowledge, and clearly his manager has faith in him. So, look, is Moose biting off more than he can chew? I don't quite know yet, but I do know that if you want to be the best, and if you want to be a, a competitor that players look to and fans look to as a top dog in the league, you got to start calling out the names that people care about. You see all this rookie town coming in really into every division here in the movie trivia Schmodown. And I think I speak now for Andrew when I say, I've never been happier to be behind the desk, having all the answers right here, just getting to ask questions. There, there, there's no pressure on us, bud. 
No, it, it's so much better. You get to look at the game from a bird's eye point of view as opposed to down in the trenches, sweat. I mean, look, I know every single moment that these guys are going through. I know the goods, I know the bads, and I got to tell you, man, it feels way better to be up here with you. It's a lot of fun on our lofty perch in our ivory tower. Now, if I find out you don't actually have a Ford Fusion, it all gets taken away. But thank you to Andrew Guy for being a spectacular broadcast partner here. Thank you to two worthy sporting competitors. New ones at that in Moose Haas and Jacob Whitney. Been their managers. Sam Levine and Tom Dagnino, the great Steph Sabra handling the post-game interview duties, and everybody here at Skybound, including our own Christian Harloff, the announcer extraordinaire. I'm just Mark Ellis saying thank you, and make sure you check out the movie trivia show on Patreon. Select which tier is right for you. That $10 tier is going to get you every pay-per-view match all year long, and the $20 tier allows you to come in, ask some questions with a whole lot of other fun bonuses. So check it out, see what works for you and your budget, and we'll see you here for another edition real soon of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Bye, guys. Oh, man. Hey, hey, dude. Hey, hey, Juice. Well, that obviously didn't go the way that uh, we wanted, but hey, I had fun. I accomplished some goals, and I'm sure with enough work, you know, I'm sure I'm sure we'll get it next time. And uh yeah, thanks. Thanks again so much for your help. And uh, yeah, what? What's going on, man? You blew it. This was our shot. This was my shot. I was oh, the juice in the Jake. We were gonna take the schmo down. You blew it. I. Yeah, you flushed our it right shot? down the toilet. Yeah, our, our shot. shot. Yeah. What do you mean this our was, shot? You you had this, nothing to do with the match. I was the one who played. This was my chance. I put so much effort into the Kitar, the Kitar video I did, and you blew it. It was pointless what, now. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Juice? We, we, we worked hard at this. I, I I did the best that I could. I don't know. I I it wasn't good enough. It just that's the bottom line. It wasn't good enough. What 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 do you mean it wasn't good enough? And what do you mean our shot? I was the one out there putting my neck on the line the whole time. You weren't there at all. Look, I, I spent all this time putting together, getting Kitar stuff ready for you. But maybe I put my money in the wrong horse. What? Wrong horse? What, what do you mean? Look, maybe I put my money in the wrong friend. Excuse, excuse me? The wrong friend? Yeah. Dude, we've been friends for years. Look, man, bottom line, you're a loser. What? You gotta be kidding. You have you have got to be kidding me. Well, as much I, I know how much you love that that crew, but dude, we can't leave the suspects. We're committed. We're we're on the team. Come on, I never, come on, dudes. I never signed a contract. <laughs>